Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist and welcome to another COVID debunking video. A couple weeks ago, I talked about a meta-analysis that claimed to show that vitamin D treats COVID when really it was just a garbage in, garbage out meta-analysis. And this week I want to talk about another meta-analysis released by the Cochrane Group. This study has been shared among anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers claiming that masks don't actually work against COVID and it's held up as proof. So this is an example of not a garbage in garbage out meta-analysis, but I want to talk about the actual data surrounding masks and what the authors actually say that anti-maskers conveniently leave out of their message. So let's get started. So let's get right to the chase. This is the section of the Cochrane review that anti-maskers always point out, which states that masks probably don't have any effect on community transmission of flu and respiratory diseases. However, the part that anti-maskers conveniently leave out is this part, where they say that the confidence of their findings are not great, essentially, and that more studies are needed in order to make a stronger conclusion and a better determination of what the data actually show. So how should we actually look at the data concerning mask wearing and preventing transmission of respiratory viruses? Well, again, we have to look at the quality of the studies. We have to look at the questions that the studies are able to answer along with the questions that the studies attempt to ask in order to determine whether or not the results they find are significant to whatever answer we're looking for. When it comes to masks, I see a lot of misunderstandings that prevent anti-maskers from doing this properly when they search the literature. What is the primary purpose of a mask? I think most people would say the primary purpose is to protect the person wearing it from infectious diseases. And that's not true. That is not the primary purpose of a mask. The primary purpose of a mask is source control. Yes, it's true that when you're wearing a mask, you are offered some protection to yourself from respiratory viruses. However, that's not the main point. The main point is to prevent you from spewing fewer viral particles out of your face. And yes, you can shed viral particles while you're infected every time you cough, sneeze, or do normal things like talk or breathe. All of these things can shed viral particles. And depending on what stage of infection you're in, you might be shedding a lot of viral particles or you might not be shedding as much. You could also be pre-symptomatic, meaning you have not developed symptoms yet, or you could be completely asymptomatic, meaning you won't develop symptoms at all and still shed virus. This means that it can be important to wear a mask even when you're not feeling sick. And that's why masks were heavily mandated early on in the pandemic when we didn't know where the virus was or how widespread it actually was in the community. We did not know who had it or who could be shedding it. And we didn't have vaccines or antivirals to reduce our risk once we did get infected. So how does a mask work as source control? And how can we test it with experiments and look for those experiments in the literature? Well, a mask works as source control by blocking the amount of virus that you actually shed out of your mouth and nose while you're infected. Assessing the efficacy of this in a community setting is difficult for multiple reasons. For example, there are several studies that take the approach of looking at healthcare workers and whether or not cloth masks, surgical masks, no mask, or N95s have any efficacy against them testing positive for SARS-CoV-2. These experiments are easy to set up since healthcare workers already know how to wear masks and are in settings where they might be exposed to SARS-CoV-2. And usually in hospital settings, the patients are masked as well. However, this setting is asking the question, how well does the mask protect the wearer? And it's not able to account for times that the healthcare worker was not wearing a mask. Obviously, the healthcare worker is going to take their mask off at some point when they go home or when they leave the hospital at some point. So did they get infected while they had their mask off? This same problem might apply to community settings. Was the person who got infected wearing a mask when they got infected? Were other people wearing a mask around them when they got infected? How did that happen? We don't really know. These are just some of the confounding variables that you have to think about that illustrate just how complicated doing these experiments are. However, we have done these experiments and the totality of the evidence in community mask wearing observational studies, randomized controlled trials, what have you, lean toward masks work. 
There are several community mask wearing studies that show that masks reduce the amount of infections in the community. These have been published and are free to read for anybody. But what the Cochrane Review was pointing out was that the quality of this evidence is overall weak. We don't have a ton of well-designed studies that show a significant effect that masks work. We don't have a ton of well-designed quality studies in general. But scientists are clever, and we can do other experiments to test this question as well. We can directly measure how many viral particles are making it past the mask when a person is infected and they're doing normal things like breathing, coughing, sneezing, whatever. And we can compare that to without a mask or with an N95 mask and see what we get. And every time there has been an experiment like this published, it shows that masks block most viral particles from going past the mask and into the air. And that's really important. SARS-CoV-2 can spread in the community through the air. So imagine you're in a room with lots of other people and a certain number of people in that room are infected. Those people may be shedding infectious virus. If they are, then the more time they spend in that room coughing, breathing, sneezing, or just talking, the more viral particles they will shed and the air will eventually get saturated with virus enough to a point where if you breathe it in, then there's enough virus there for you to get infected. But if those people are wearing masks in that room, then it's going to take a lot longer for the air to get saturated with enough virus because the amount of virus that they're spreading into the air is drastically reduced. If that room has some ventilation, then that time to that critical mass is really important because while the virus is still getting up to that saturated level, the air will circulate and diffuse it around so that it never really builds up to that level where when you can breathe it in, you get infected. So right there is an example of mask wearing plus ventilation leading to a drastically reduced risk of infection for everybody in the room. That is how masks work as source control. And we know that they work like this. There are several studies demonstrating it. It's just a lot harder to do a high quality study in a community setting. But again, the community setting data do all lean toward masks being effective. Despite this, I still see anti-maskers being anti-maskers and saying a lot of stupid things. For example, there's this that they always bring up. This is a little video of someone breathing in cold weather while wearing a mask and showing that their breath comes out the side and top of their mask. The particles that carry virus that come out of your face are droplets or aerosols. These are liquid particles. They are not gases. They behave like tiny liquid droplets. They will get caught in the mask. Masks are a really cheap and effective way to reduce the spread of respiratory illnesses. These are cheap, easy to use tools that can be used easily in combination with other tools to make all of the tools together really effective at reducing risk and saving lives. It's not hard, and it should be something that we can all get on board doing, especially now <laughs> and in future pandemics, which might be worse than COVID. I really don't look forward to a day where a much deadlier respiratory virus is creating a new pandemic and we still have these idiots saying that masks don't work. So let's just drop it now, okay, so we can be better prepared in the future, please? Well, there you have it. That's all I wanted to say this week. That's another short video reviewing the new meta-analysis that anti-vaxxers, anti-maskers are sharing but not reading or interpreting properly, but big surprise there. Before I go, I want to make a quick announcement. Dr. Bob the Science Guy and I have been working on a series covering the pandemic profiteers over on his secondary channel, Research Flat Moon. If you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I've covered the Disinformation Dozen, and this is kind of a continuation or a revisiting of that kind of series. So if you're interested in checking that out, then do head over to his secondary channel. Again, it's Research Flat Moon. Go ahead and subscribe to it and check out the series. And all of his other fun content that he has debunking flat earthers and whatnot. It's a good time. With all that said, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. As always, all the links to all the science that I talked about are in the description of this video so that you can read them for yourself. And please do check them out.
And if you like this video, of course, don't forget to subscribe and like the video so that you can catch me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.